Dear viewers, I recently came across some interesting news. As per Fortune article, in FY24, one in every four Mercedes-Benz cars sold in India was a top-end vehicle costing over rupees 1.5 crore. What's more, it posted its highest ever sales in India in the March quarter. The management was not prepared for this, it seems. Their challenge is that they are down to their last units of the best-selling luxury sedan in India and they may be out of stock for the best-selling product. The new E-Class is expected to come only by the end of the year. The rise of the luxury class in India has taken everyone by surprise. The demand has outstripped supply. Luxury vehicles sold in India grew 20% year-on-year in 2023. The growth could have been more if the supplies were planned better. And this is a broader trend. The SUV sales are racing past the overall passenger vehicle category volume growth. SUV share in PVs is expected to rise from 51% to 62% by FY25. Overall, the average selling price of a passenger vehicle is a 50% in last five years. And it's not just cars. The personal luxury market is expected to grow at 12% as per industry reports. That beats GDP growth by a decent margin. Now, the opportunity is not lost on Western luxury brands like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Cartier, and others. They are renting space in luxury retail malls and have signed leases within Geo World Plaza. The domestic sales volume of luxury houses priced at Rs 4 crore or more was up 75% year-on-year year in 2023. Once looked down upon as a land of snake charmers, India is now hogging limelight for beating the other developed nations and adding billionaires. Mumbai has taken over Beijing in China on this step. And there is more. Last week, 4.71 lakh passengers travelled by air, recording the highest single-day air traffic ever in the country. Now, such news across different sectors is a trend that you should take note of. While FMCG companies are fretting over inflation and slowdown in the growth, the premiumization theme is gliding well on lubricated wheels. With a favourable demographic dividend and aspiring millennials, the growth of luxury and premiumization are likely to be structural trends. You see, when the income and affordability rise, the discretionary consumption takes a disproportionate leap. Money becomes a way to not just meet basic needs, but aspirations, pleasure, and vanity. People switch to brands, consolidation happens, value migration and premiumization follow. For investors, this could throw up great investment opportunities. In an earlier video on this theme, I had highlighted the opportunity in Tricor. But there are more businesses riding this theme that you should put on your watch list. Consider names like Ethos, Brand Concepts, and Titan. And since we started this video highlighting luxury cars, I would like to spend some time on the company named Landmark Cars, which is India's premier dealership for premium and luxury cars. Around 80% of its revenue comes from new vehicle sales. The rest 20% is from after-sales, pre-owned vehicle sales, and finance and insurance. After-sales for the company is NVD kind of business. The company is number one partner for brands like Mercedes, Volkswagen, Renault, and BYD. Furthermore, it is well on its way to onboard MG Motors and Mahindra SUV. Diversification across multiple brands is good in case launches slow down in a particular brand and mitigate the cyclicality. With 12 new launches, it expects significant growth in Mercedes brands itself this year. The company has been a prominent player in the North and West India and is now expanding its presence in the South. Its pre-owned car business is profitable already and is expected to double in a year. Landmark Cars has seen 15% year-on-year rise in every selling price, which was at Rs 20 lakh this year. The every service revenue too was up 13% at Rs 25k. The share of after-sales revenue in the recent quarter was 21%. As I said earlier, it's kind of annuity business for the company, growing at 20% CAGR and with returns on capital of 36%. The overall business has 24% ROCE. In last two years, that is from FY21 to 23, the revenue has grown 73% and the net profit has grown by over 600%. The business is asset light. The debt-to-equity ratio is at 0.7 times. The stock is trading at a PE of 44. Now, please note that none of the stocks mentioned in this video imply any buy, hold, or sell view.
The purpose is to make you aware of potential plays on themes that are doing well. With this, I have come to the end of this video. Let me know through your comments and likes if you found this information useful. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.